Howdy folks, John here. In today's video, I'm hopefully going to be showing you how to uh, repair a rather large scratch on an alloy, at least my poor attempt at it. Anyone who follows my channel, you may have seen a recent little uh, video series I did on manual tire changers. And one of the primary reasons I wanted to start doing my own tires was to avoid this very damage. This wheel was badly scratched last time I had the tires changed. And frankly, I am getting sick and tired of paying a premium price for careless mother to scratch the hell out of my uh, wheels. This isn't a one of. I've got uh, several wheels that have been scratched over the years by tire shops. And as I'm replacing the tires, these uh, running shoes are pretty much worn out. So I've got to take the tire off anyway. I thought it would be a good time to uh, repair this scratch. Let's have a close-up look at it. Yeah, so no idea how they did this. The scratch starts about here and ends about here. The main scratch is very deep and wide. It's right through the primer down to the uh, aluminum, very close to the edge here. And then a finer scratch develops about here. Again, right through the uh, primer, you can see some shiny aluminum underneath, so very deep. And then it finally trails off over here. So a very large circumference of the wheel is affected. Now you certainly don't have to remove the tire to do a wheel scratch repair. You know, if it was closer in here or on one of the spokes, you know, you can just mask the uh, tire off from overspray. But due to the proximity here, I've got to uh, get this tire off. <laughs> So just spending some extra time cleaning all this baked on tire goo that accumulates over the years. Don't get your nose in there. Once the tire is removed, we can do a proper inspection of the wheel. Of course, this is our main scratch damage. But when a tire is off, <laughs> like looking on the inside of the wheel, you'll often find damage in here. Stuff like this, these deep scratches, this is the sealing surface where the rubber bead of the tire actually seals. Stuff like this can cause slow leaks. And that's done from a uh, tire iron at one point in time. You know, here's some more here. And another problem with this wheel I've noticed, we're getting some corrosion uh, on the inside lip here. You know, here's some corrosion right across the ceiling surface. So I'm also going to knock that down with some sandpaper. Just put a light coat of primer on it and then clear it. But let's get to the scratch here. So first thing I'm going to have to do is sand it down. And the reason for that is the reason you can't just paint over top of it. Excuse my crude drawing. But when you get a scratch in paint, here's the surface. We've got a layer of primer thin layer of color, and then a thicker layer of clear. When you get a scratch, in this case, right down to the surface with this wheel, not only is there a big valley in here, it creates two raised humps on either side of that finished surface. So that's why we've got to sand this down. So I'm going to be taking the clear right down. We might even be going through the color into the primer. And certainly on that big scratch, it's been removed right down to the surface. Now understand, I don't proclaim to be a painting expert. In fact, painting is one of my weakest skill sets. But uh, when I built old R2, I learned a few things. And yeah, I've done some refinishing work in the past. Anyway, I've just got some water with a few drops of dish soap detergent in it just to break the surface tension and have some 400 grit wet and dry. And just going to sand this scratch down. 
Basically, I, I don't want to feel any ridge on it anymore. And yeah, this scratch does go a long way around. It's almost halfway. Well, most of that scratch actually sanded out. It didn't go through the primer coat for the most part, at least the skinny one. That big scratch though right here, yeah, this is right into the metal. So gonna have to reprime that. If you had any huge gouges that were actually into the metal, uh, you could fill them in with spot putty if they weren't too deep or even a, uh, you know, a lightweight body filler. So for the primer, I'm just using this Duplicolor sandable primer. So it fills scratches. You sand it down afterwards. That's why I'm brushing it on. You know, you could spray it on, but this is such a small area. If you were redoing the whole wheel, obviously you'd spray it. But for just little small areas like this, I find brushing it on will work fine. And uh, just going to put a few coats of this on. You can see it's pretty thin. The primer actually started working a little bit better once uh, it flashed off a little bit in that cup. Anyway, uh, just coated everything that I sanded with the 400 grit to fill in any of the 400 grit sanding lines. Uh, put about three coats on just where the primer was. Where we were right through the metal though, I've put about six coats on. And I'm just going to let this dry for a few hours before I start uh, wet sanding it. 1000 grit wet sanding time. And this is just to blend that new primer in with the clear coat. Just give it a nice smooth finish. And yeah, if, if you just had a light scratch that wasn't all the way through the clear, you could just wet sand the clear with a thousand grit or even 1500 grit and power polish it. That feathered in quite nicely, nice and glass smooth with that thousand grit. So I'm just going to let this primer uh, fully cure now overnight and we'll come back tomorrow and hit it with some color. Welcome to day two of our wheel scratch repair. The primer has dried overnight and I just wanted to show you a couple of other things I did last night. I filled in all those scratches that we saw earlier with spot putty and also sanded down all the corrosion, filled all the little corrosion pits in with spot putty and I've clear coated this. So before we get to the paint, I thought we should talk a little bit about the paint, how you apply it. Totally your choice. Again, I am no paint expert. Obviously spraying it on is really the only option. You can't brush the final color finish on. It'll just look like crap. So I'm using, well, I'm not using this color, but you're going to have to find out what silver color your wheels are, are pretty close to it. You know, the Duplicolor color match, you could look online for that for your specific model. I ordered this uh, touch-up paint off of eBay. Off of, uh, this is from a UK seller. It's supposed to be a perfect match for pretty much all German wheels. It says Mercedes, but it should be a match for Porsche, BMW. And I've tested it out on a little card and it seems to be pretty damn close no paint is going to be an exact match. The idea here is I'm going to paint with an airbrush because obviously this is not a spray. I've got this little airbrush kit. These are an awesome little kit. I'll fire a link below in the description if you're looking for a decent airbrush kit and you don't want to spend a fortune. You know, I'm not a big airbrusher, but this little kit is awesome. I think it's around 50 bucks or so, maybe even less. Uh, just an awesome little spray kit. And I'm going to be using this touch-up paint in that air sprayer. And you have really good control with a little airbrush like that. And I'm basically going to put the color, I'm going to feather it out right on the curve. Any mismatch is going to be as least visible as possible. And then when we're done, I'm going to let the silver color set up for just under an hour. And then I'm going to hit it with some clear. So we've got our paint in, just doing a few test sprays just to make sure it's not coming out too fast. Before you 
obviously use this, make sure the clear you're putting over it doesn't react. So again, I tested this on a sample card and then put clear over it so I knew it wouldn't bubble or crinkle or whatever. Again, this has all been sanded with 1000 grit, so we've got, should have good adhesion. And what's nice about the airbrush is you don't have to worry about masking because it's so precise. There we go. Now I'm just going to move the wheel and do the edges, but you get the idea. That color looks really good, but we won't know for sure until we get the clear on. And while that silver spray is curing, I've just got a couple of little scratches in here. I'm going to just touch up. Hopefully you can hear me here. We're kind of in the paint booth and the fans going. I'd like to do this outside. Of course, you could do this outside putting on the clear coat. It's pine pollen season though here in the uh, mountains, so uh, don't want my wheels covered in a fine layer of pine pollen. So whatever clear coat you use, just make sure to read your instructions, know the working times you have. For instance, this stuff, uh, any second or third coats you have to put on within an hour. After that, you have to wait, I think, 24 or 48 hours. When you put this stuff on, the first layer, just go really light. Uh, not just to prevent runs of the clear coat, but to prevent the color coming out of the metallic silver. It can bleed into the clear and give weird uh, markings. If you wanted to mask parts of your wheel so you didn't get any clear overspray on, you could. I'm not too concerned. I am going to be polishing this whole wheel, including the new clear, once it cures after about two or three days to remove any overspray or blend it in. So I'm just going to do a really quick light coat. And that's it. Just to let that set up before we do the second. It's been about half an hour. I'm going to throw on coat number two. This one I'm going to put on a little bit thicker. Third and final coat time. I should mention before I started any of this, this wheel was well cleaned. I cleaned it with a degreaser and then I wiped it down with isopropanol before I even started anything. So third and final coat, gonna go a little bit thicker this time. Just don't wanna get any runs. And I should mention between these uh, filming takes, I have turned the wheel around and I have done the backside too because I wanted to get, you know, the very edge lip of the rim. So it's been two days to let the clear coat cure and now I'm just polishing it with some compound uh, to kind of blend the clear coat that we put on with the other clear coat and to knock down any overspray just using a little three inch orange polishing pad on a drill. And I'm just going to go over the entire wheel just in case there's any overspray. Plus the wheel needs polishing anyway. And you can do this by hand of course, but uh, using the polishing pad on a drill just makes it go a little bit quicker. And from what I can see, the paint match is really good. We'll have a look after I've finished this. Apologies for doing this freehand, but I figured it's the only way to uh, get in close enough to look. So, where is the paint repair? Well, it starts here. And I can just see ever so slightly a slight difference in color. Camera's probably not picking it up but it's very close and it looks like, where is it here? 
There's one little spot here. Again, I don't know if the camera's picking it up. Looks like I went a little bit thin when I was airbrushing the silver. Oh, you can see it there. Metallic's funny. At certain angles, it'll pick the defects up. But other than that, I can't really tell where it ends. Somewhere around here. So when you can't see where your repair starts and finishes, I guess we can call it not too bad. And yeah, I did decide to take time and respray the uh, inside there. It was bugging me with all that uh, just being unfinished like that. So if you've got a wheel scratch caused by incompetence, carelessness, or you or your better half parallel park by feel, <laughs> Uh, hopefully this video gave you enough information to uh, try to tackle the job yourself. It's not hard, but like any paint repair, it does take time. And if an idiot like me who is not good at painting can produce half-decent results, I think anyone can. Now I would love to get the uh, new rubber mounted onto the wheel, but because I had to paint those inside surfaces, fix those scratches and corrosion, I want that paint to cure for a full week before I fit the tire. Thanks for watching, folks. Happy scratch repair. We'll see you next time.